Welcome to our channel. In this Tekken 7 video, join us as we dive into the world of ranked matches while showcasing the unstoppable skills of Lucky Chloe. Prepare to be amazed as we unleash her killer moves and witness the chaos she brings into the arena. In our intense ranked battles, you will see Lucky Chloe's dynamic fighting style in action. I'm still looking for players to join the online tournaments. Now, for every 50 subscriber this channel gets, I will be giving away $50 to one lucky subscriber via Cash App until we reach our ultimate goal of 2,000 subscribers. And if you happen to have your own YouTube channel, I will subscribe to your channel as well. I think all YouTube creators should subscribe to one another's channels to help each other's channel grow. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and hit the like button down below. Don't forget to check out the community page to see the latest image poll. I have also created a new playlist called Announcements so you can stay informed with everything you need to know about this channel including upcoming up events, tournaments, raffles and giveaways. And if you would like to support this channel, any donation big or small will help. Just send me a text with the word donation to my cell phone number at 862-405-2191 and I will provide you with the Cash App link. It's the same number to enter into the raffles. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to support our channel so you can be notified whenever we release exciting Tekken 7 content. Join our community of dedicated gamers as we explore other characters, dwell into the different game modes, and unravel the mysteries within the incredible world of fighting games. Thanks for watching. All right, here we go. So let's get into her personality before we get to her story, right? So real quick, throughout her intro and her win poses, Lucky Chloe comes across a very playful and always smiling young girl. She's a fan of the Japanese culture and cats, as told by the cat ear headphones and the tail of a cat. In addition, um, you can hear her at times pronouncing the word meow as the Japanese sounds of a cat's meow. Now, despite Lucky Chloe's cute and playful facade, she takes it upon herself to idolize this um, persona during fights. It is revealed to be no more than a role. She is depicted as a bratty and mean. Really? She's mean? I don't think she's mean. <laughs> I mean, I can understand the bratty part. Now, it says here, as seen in Eddie's ending, um, where she outsmarts Eddie by giving him a childish drawing after leading him to believe it was a note revealing Kasia's uh, whereabouts in her own ending she is shown to be a controlling to be a little bit controlling and does not hesitate hesitate to kick eddie as she forces him to practice the pose of pre preparation <laughs> for becoming her backup dancer furthermore in jack seven's ending she blames jack seven for bumping into her despite her being the one not paying attention she's also has no concern after um witnessing jack sevens falling off the g corporation tower and presumably being destroyed due to his incident aside from this the opening text in her characters episode show her to be confident in her skills challenging eddie to a fight even after he had defeated multiple g corporation guards now that's kind of true like like she wasn't faced by you know eddie goro's skills and eddie's a beast man all right, so let's get into um, her story mode, right, in Tekken 7. Now, it says here, Character Episode Prologue. Lucky Chloe is a pop sensation and the face of the G-Corporation brand. When a mysterious man bursts into the G-Corp and took out guard after guard with dance-like techniques, Lucky Chloe fearlessly walked up right up to him and blocked his path. She threw the man one of her trademark smiles and issued him a challenge. Fight her, and if he loses, he will have to work for her backup as a backup dancer. Without caring to accept the conditions or not, she prepared for battle. As a child, Chloe's parents took her to the expo and expose of her Japanese idol culture. Ever since then, she always wanted to be an idol. With her good looks, she set out to be in the world's best idol and name herself Lucky Chloe. Donning her cute costume, she went out to show the world her dancing moves and put all the other pros to shame. She quickly became world famous when her dancing became viral on an internet video site. Now in Tekken 7 Lucky Chloe's ending and intro, it says here, since then she collaborated with the G Corporation and has signed a contract with them. 
She became a popular face of the company and was used in very advertisement by the G Corporation as the company's image. Despite the current struggle between the G Corporation and the Mishima Saibatsu, she always puts on a smile and a happy face during these difficult times. Now the ending descri description of Lucky Chloe teaches Eddie her signature poses, but she noticed him falling behind. Chloe kicks him for an error and demands that he holds up his end of the bargain as their backup dancer. The two of them proceed and with Eddie still falling behind, Chloe keeps kicking him and each time the scene finally ends with Eddie yelling no after Chloe tells him that he will dress as a girl when they perform live. <laughs> wow, I think she should have mentioned that <laughs> before the fight, but that's my stuff. Hey, if you say you're gonna do something, you have to do it, right? Now these are some trivia, for, um, you know, general context. So it says here, Lucky Chloe has received both criticism and praises by the fans due to her appearance and personality. The backlash against her was so vocal, however, um, that it prompted Tekken producer uh, Katishuro Harada to jokingly remark that she would be replaced in the North American version by a bold, muscular skinhead that she would be excluded only to the East and Asian European regions. However, some of the gaming news publications uh, reported this as facts, not knowing that he was just joking around, leading to Harada clarifying that those tweets were a joke and Lucky Chloe is still playable in all regions. Now, the, the fact that he's mentioned that, it just reminds me of Brian Fury, like, <laughs> what are they talking about? It says here, technically, I rather ironically, a bull muscular skinhead has already been featured in Tekken in one of the, there you go, you see, in, as one of Brian Fury's outfits in Tekken Tag Tournament. Feature him as a bull skin tight um, t-shirt and leather pants with him also being rather muscular and rude. More presently, importantly, said the outfit also currently available in Tekken 7 through customizations. Right, I was figuring like if, when they were talking about that, it sounded like Brian Fury. <laughs> Oh man, so it says here, um, Harada uh, stated that Lucky Chloe is not from Japan, though she is a big fan of the Japanese pop culture. Uh, he also he also said that she is hiding a big a big secret. Now, what can she be hiding? Like, I don't know. It's weird. It says Lucky Chloe's um, Lee Violet speaks both Japanese and English. However, the language of Lee Violet speaks usually corresponds to his um, respective identity. Also, Chloe speaks English with her rather heavy Japanese accent, unlike Lee in Tekken 4 and Tekken Tag uh, Tournament 2. Uh, Lucky Chloe's on Lockable Moves uh, Corkscrew is similar to Eddie and Christina uh, Fruit Picker um, Blockable Moves. Although the damage dealt with she executes the movement is much weaker than Eddie and Christina. Okay. In the Tekken Kasuya Revenge, there is a character that is similar to Lucky Chloe who shares the same name as her and while sporting the same hairstyle, her ending is similar to Yotsumitsu's um, intruder with Raven in Tekken 5 when Yotsumitsu loses the fight. In the end, he teaches Raven uh, how to use the Ninjitsu hand sign but fails much to Raven's disappointment. It says here in Lucky Chloe's case, she is seen forcing Eddie to imitate her poses, kicking him. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> Poor Eddie, man. They, they, he, he has to keep reliving this. But yeah, that's some of her trivia, guys. And again, uh, Loki Chloe, um, for me, she's like a, a gem. All right, she was a. Uh, like, I didn't like her her character at the beginning, but like after playing and you know learning about her background, like okay, she's badass. And after learning some of her moveset, like she has deadly combinations. Like she she's a powerhouse. She's definitely something not to uh, to be messed with, especially her low combinations. You could easily go low and high with her. And what else? I also want to talk to you guys again. I'm gonna keep mentioning, guys. If you're interested in the online tournament, please let me know. You can reach out through the comments through YouTube, or if you see me promoting or recruiting on Facebook, just send me a message that you're interested and let me know. I would like to see some real high-level competition and everybody's invited me. And again, not all of them you know, have to be cash price. They could just be for fun. 
I just want to see the skills out there. I know that the beautiful thing about Tekken 7, they do have tournaments out there. Ooh, got him with the gun. Ah, he dodged just in time. Oof, got him. Sorry, Jitsumitsu, you thought you had that, but you didn't. But yeah, even though Tekken 7 had a great tournament, which they're awesome, but I would like to see how we do for our own. So yeah, guys, if you guys are interested, let me know. Tell me if you guys are excited for Tekken 8. I know I am. I want to start playing the beta now, the one that they have out, but I'd rather just wait. I'll wait until January. I think it's coming out in 24. I'll, I'll just wait. That will give me time to continue playing Street Fighter 6, Mortal Kombat 1, and 11. And um, it'll give me time to finish up here with Tekken 7. Because again, I had this game when it first came out. But I started playing online recently since I created a YouTube channel. So that's why all my rankings are like super low. So once Tekken 8 comes out, man, I'm going to be non-stop playing online. So you guys can see the rankings go up. But right now, I'm just playing with every character, giving you guys um, all their stories. Um, and then after that, after I finish playing with every character, I'm going to tier um, select the tiers. See how how they rank up against each other and give you guys my honest opinion. But yeah, Lucky Claw, she's definitely tough. She's definitely a good character. A fun character if you want to learn how to play with, to be honest. Oh, look, we're having a mirror match here. Nice. This should be interesting. Let's see what she knows versus what I know. Okay, this should be a good match. But yeah, definitely don't shy away from playing with Lucky Chloe. She really has a lot of good movesets. I was surprised. I really was. And um, yeah, it caught me off guard. Like, she's a good character. Like, overall, she's gonna be like an A or a B. Like, well, we'll see. I only have a few characters left. I should be done pretty soon. I think I have like a handful more to go, and then I could finally give you guys my tier list of how they rank. I guys, man, I like her outfit like this though. That's not that bad neither. Ooh, too Round bad you're about one. to get demoted, my son. Fight. Oh, you want to go for the kicks? Okay. Oosh. I love that car wheel kick, man. But yeah, guys. Uh, again, I can't wait for Tekken 8 to hurry up. I want to play the full version of the game. And I'm so happy they brought back June. I don't know how they're going to tell that story. But I can't wait. Jun was my favorite character uh, next to Kazaya and then when Tekken 3 came out on uh, freaking Jin but yeah man Jun was definitely my number one and now it's Asuka because she's the closest to her similar fighting style but uh, I can't wait I hope I hope the story one thing that Tekken 7 is above the rest is that their storytelling is so good so I hope they don't mess it up like, I love how they integrated Akuma with the Tekken storyline. Like, that was amazing. Like, I hope they continue to, you know, keep giving us good st uh, storytelling. Man. I hope they do. Like, I would like to hear from you guys in the comments. Like, the way they integrated Akuma into the story, like, I think was genius. They almost made it seem like he was uh, freaking <laughs> Kazuya's real uh, real father, like <laughs> with the Dark Hado and this Devil Jin and all this other crap. Like, yo, could be a version of of the heart, you know, Dark Hado really is the Devil Jin. Like, I don't know. But man, I was impressed with the storytelling in Tekken 7. Like, they took it to a whole nother level and they put everything well like they connected everything well and they was able to introduce Kazuya's mom into the story by bringing in Akuma like oh, I loved it I thought it was very very genius and please let me know on the comments what you guys thought like of the story of Tekken 7 like was it done well like what do you guys think but uh, yes I can't wait for Tekken 8 I'm gonna be patient and I'm going to try to finish up everything here in Tekken 7. So by the time Tekken 8 comes out, we'll be ready, guys. Ooh, got him with the special. 
And one thing about Chloe special, you can't block that. Like, I mean, the only way you could block that is by like trying to move back when she's about to do it. But if you close enough to your opponent and you activate her special, they're gonna get caught 99% uh, of the time because that 1% is them either jumping backwards. That's like the only way you can get away from that. Uh, let's 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 wrap this up, guys. Again, guys, I want to thank you guys for watching this video. Please like, subscribe, and comment on the video. Oh, he got me with the special. Okay. Still not enough, though. I'm about to wrap this up soon. Oh, no, he did it. Not enough. See? Look at that special, bro. When you're too close, it's just automatic. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you for watching. Wow, you trash for quitting. You saw that, guys? Like, the match was over. The game is over. And they quit at the last second. I hope they know they still counts as a loss. Like, you still got the L. And now everybody saw you quitting at the last moment. Great. Like, what was that for? Just take the L, man. Like, we all lose. I lost plenty of times. Like, I hate when they do that, man. Anyways, take care, guys. Don't forget to subscribe.